We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS. Just a moment ago, the Bulldogs from Athens, Georgia. They come into this encounter having lost 15 of the lost 17 games, last 17, against these Florida Gators. We join the SEC in celebrating 75 years of college football in the Southeastern Conference this afternoon, the Georgia Bulldogs against the Gators of Florida. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson. Welcome to Jacksonville and the 75th encounter at this site between these two better rivals. However, you need two to compete if you're going to have a real rivalry. And Georgia has lost, as we said, 15 of the last 17. This is a jumbled up SEC East. Thus, the significance of this game. Check this. Five teams with two losses. If Florida wins out, they win the SEC East. Georgia can go if they win the SEC, if they win their next three, but they need some help to get to Atlanta. And Gary Danielson, the overriding concern of the Florida fans has been the condition of Tim Tebow's bruised right shoulder. I'd be concerned too if I was Florida. This is the guy that really makes this offense go, obviously, but it's his power running. Even though it's his non-throwing shoulder, he leads with that right shoulder. He protects the passing arm. And it all came to a head last week against Kentucky when he took numerous shots on that right shoulder. And he felt it. It's not just wear and tear now. It is an injury, and he has to be healthy, I think, for this offense to work. Well, for more on that, let's go down to the sideline. Here's Tracy Wolfs. Thanks a lot, guys. Because of soreness in that right shoulder, he was limited in practice this week. Tebow spent a significant amount of time in the training room receiving treatment. He will be wearing these shoulder pads that will have extra padding on the right side. He had two hours of treatment this morning and received an anti-inflammatory shot before warm-ups. He told the trainers he felt good, and as Urban Meyer told me, it's going to take a lot more than a sore shoulder to keep him out of this one, guys. All right, Tracy and Gary, it's not that Tebow is the sole weapon this Florida team has. No, that's true. I mean, and he's going to have to rely on those weapons, and they are great weapons. When you look at Harvin and Caldwell, Harvin does it from any spot, any formation, runs the ball, catches the ball, makes people miss, and then the reemergence of Bubba Caldwell. He's another one of those lightning receivers that makes Florida so special, and I think in this football game, both of these guys are going to have to help Tebow to make some more plays. On the other side of the line of scrimmage, this Georgia Bulldog team comes in 5-2, and two, but the numbers really haven't been favorable uh, to them. I think you're right. I'm going to give me a little bit of help right here. You okay. mentioned the first one, 2-15 and 15 since 1990. You're going to hold these for me, okay? Yes, in the two wins, they scored over 30, 37 and 31 points, okay? But in the 15 losses... Look at that, 17 points, 12 times. 12 times they scored 17 or less. I think the goal in this game, 28 points. If they go into this game, they need at least 28 to compete in that game. There you go. Thank you, I appreciate that. How do they do that? <laughs> well, I think they should take a look at the last two games, okay? You look at what LSU did. They gave them power in running the ball. Georgia has that with no Sean Marino. They can give you a little bit of eye. And then Kentucky showed that you can finesse this Florida defense by a little bit of screens, a little bit of backs, and throwing the ball downfield. Georgia has the ability to do both finesse and power. That has to be the game plan. Well, I think we've got budgetary concerns. Tim Russert gets a grease for it. <laughs> You've got Manila folders. It, it is Florida. That's where they count them all, right? Experience SEC College Football on CBS brought to you in high definition by Sony. Overcast skies. The forecast for showers throughout the afternoon. Temperature of 71 degrees. And uh, series history, Florida does not acknowledge a game played between these two in Macon, Georgia. That was a Georgia win, 52-0. They say, no, we didn't start football till 1906. So there's a disparity in the uh, number of wins. And Florida is the home team, so we give them the uh, benefit of the doubt this time. 
Brandon Katu will kick off. Florida won the toss. They opted to receive, and they've got Brandon James at the 10-yard line. Very short kick by Katu, and the dangerous Brandon James is knocked out of bounds at the 28-yard line. And now the uh, lineups presented by Applebee's. You see the stats for Tim Tebow for the year. 17 touchdowns, three interceptions. He's also rushed for 10 touchdowns. But the concern is with the right shoulder. Up front, Watkins, Tart, Miller, Pouncey, Metter with a bad foot, but he will start. Caldwell back in the lineup, joined by Harvin, Keiston Moore, Ingram, and Lewis Murphy. First down and 10. Tebow from the spread. He's got four to the left. Now three. Long count. Georgia brings five. Keelan Johnson coming, and Tebow is sacked. Marcus Howard got there, his third sack of the year. Keelan Johnson, number 30, led the blitz, and Howard got there. Boy, if you could draw up a perfect start for Georgia, it would be to keep Tebow in the pocket, bring people, cover well, and then make a play. That's exactly what happened. Someone made a play, and Keelan Johnson was the guy who kept his motor running and made a play. Second down and 19. Timeout? Nope. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Well, a shaky start for the Florida Gators. An optimistic start for the Bulldogs of Georgia. Well, I tell you, how many times have you seen Tebow stay in the pocket when first sign of pressure not run? I think he knows that shoulder is not 100%. He is under orders to stay in the pocket. Just underway in Jacksonville. Let's uh, introduce you to the Georgia defense. Battle Owens Atkins and Marcus Howard, who just had the sack. The linebackers, Miller Washington back in the lineup after an injury, Danelle Ellerby and the secondary. You saw Keelan Johnson blitzing in the last play. Miller, Bird, and Asher Allen join him. Tebow on second and 19. Three down this time for Georgia. They walk a man up. Now back out. Games being played. Blitz coming, Keelan Johnson. Inside, Lewis Murphy. And Murphy doesn't get much. If you're going to put the wear and tear on Tim Tebow, you must, when they go empty, hit him every time. This time right up Jeff Owens, 300-pounder. Right up the middle, putting Tebow down again. And so Florida faces a third and 15 on its opening series of the ball game. Most of the time, Percy Harvin lines up to the three-receiver side. He is again on the three-receiver side right there. Tebow up to make the change. Drew Miller is his center. Three, rush, eight drop. Tebow flushed out, finds his receiver up near the first down marker. This will be close. Catch made by Andre Caldwell. You know, there were a couple questions, Vern, about Tebow coming into this season. One was, would he be a good enough passer? We knew he was going to be tough enough. It might have been a question. Did you see the opening lane right there? That's an easy throw. Bubba Caldwell goes and gets it. One was, was he going to be able to stay in the pocket and read his progression? That time, the three-man rush allowed him to read through his progression. Gain of 16 with a need of 15. Here's Tebow back. Flips it inside. Percy Harvin. And Harvin... Cuts toward the middle of the field and gets a quick six yards, maybe seven. Now, Percy Harvin, now a sophomore, wearing number one. He's equally proficient catching or running. He sure is, and he's the threat to go all the way. And already, I think you could see the altered game plan. And I wonder if defensive coordinator Willie Martinez from Georgia will start to see it the way I have. They're throwing more quick screens to try to get their ball in the hands of different players besides Tebow early in this game. It's a second down and two. That was officially a gain of eight on the last play. Here's motion. Dive play. They give it off inside to Keiston Moore, and he 
hustles his way to a first down at the 50. Well, one of the things they do so well, Gary, is to hide Harvin. They really do. When you got a playmaker like him, they're going to put Harvin all over. They've got different formations, and they hide him and try to keep the defense of guessing where he's going to be because once they get him the ball, put him in quick motion from the slot, he is a threat to take it. Watch, simple play, rocket sweep. He reads it beautifully, takes it to the end zone against Kentucky. Caldwell looks back at the uh, sideline. So also does uh, the right tackle, Metter. Here's the snap. They give it to Moore. Moore fights inside the 45 to the 43. That's a gain of seven. And a second down and three. Georgia with four down. They bring only four. And again, the front ball. Keaston Moore. It's bounced up and picked up by Allen Asher, number two. Flying down the sidelines, out of bounds. Remember the fumble that Moore had against LSU. Jason Watkins, number 77, either pushed Allen out of bounds, or that might have been a touchdown. Keaston Moore, another fumble, a huge fumble. Remember that LSU game when they had control of it? The handoff to Moore, just outside the screen. Coming from the backside, hands it off. Easy, well-blocked play. Gets a hit right on the football. Was it Dent that put his helmet on the ball? Roderick Battle. Roderick Battle, number 41. I thought it was 51. It was Battle, number 41. A turnover. Now, Georgia has not forced a lot of turnovers this year. One of the lowest in the country. They needed something like that. They've only forced six throws all season long. Usual sellout here in Jacksonville. Scoreless first quarter. And let's introduce you to the Bulldog offense. Sophomore Matthew Stafford from Dallas Highland Park. In his second season as a starter, he started eight games last year. It's Sturdivant, the true freshman, Davis, Velasco, Bowling, and Adams up front. Bailey Marino, the only healthy running back of note. Sutherland, Chandler, and Massaqua is a wideout. Eye formation on first down. Trip Chandler, the tight end, goes tight right. They toss. Marino comes left. Gets a good block. And he's inside the 35. Kyle Jackson, number three, with the tackle. Well, this was a sellout crackback block from the outside. Watch number 39 just enter the frame and get a big hit around the outside. It's reminiscent of the plays that Auburn used against Florida when they controlled the clock and kept Florida off the field in that upset win. Number 39, who got that block, was Jason Johnson. The backup fullback and tailback. And it's second down. They come left. Marino again to the 30-yard line. That appears to be enough to move the chain. Let's check this Florida defense. Up front, you've got Harvey, leads the club in sacks, Estepinen, McMillan, and Jermaine Cunningham. The linebackers, led by Brandon Spikes in the middle, leading tackler of the team, and Dustin Doe, A.J. Jones, the secondary. Not the strength of this team, and Kyle Jackson is back in the starting lineup, replacing Major Wright, the freshman, who's out with a thumb injury. Here is Urban Meyer in his third season as the Gator head coach. It was not a first down, about a foot needed for the first. High formation. They give it to the fullback. He tries to bounce. Oh, second effort. That's Brandon Sutherland, the short yardage specialist, and I believe he got enough to move the chain. That's a first and ten. Well, we talked about uh, the few number of takeaways by this Georgia team. That's only their seventh of the year. And Florida doesn't give it up that much. No, the key turnovers have cost them a game, I think, uh, right. the LSU game. But you're right. This is couldn't be a better start for Georgia right now. First down and ten in a scoreless first quarter. Stafford, draw play. Marino. Nice spin move, and he picks up nine to the 20. Well, Mark Richt has uh, an exemplary 
accomplishment. Oh, look at this, Marino, who's an excitable red shirt freshman out of New Jersey. Rick, outstanding record against everybody in the SEC except. <laughs> Boy, that, right? Yeah, I, I, I think he does. He keeps the ship level. You know, I mean, there's not a lot of ups and downs in Mark Rick, and that piece plays off for his team. The team has been up and down, but Rick stays very calm. One and five, however, against this Florida team. He's in his seventh season. And off Marino. Well, no Sean Marino, a redshirt freshman, told us on the phone yesterday that it came down, despite his being raised in New Jersey, to either Florida or Georgia. And look at these uh, gaudy stats in high school. Well, at big time football, you're loose, you're used to looking at stats like that from skilled players, but those are pretty impressive. And I'd have to say that he has, a, he has a unique style of spinning. We've already seen it so far in this game. First down and ten. Second, first down in this possession after the Keystone Moore fumble. They keep it on the ground. Marino comes left. Huge hole. First and goal. Georgia at the three. Two different ways have been shown to attack this football team. LSU and Auburn did it with power. Sutherland just lifts the linebacker that time, Ryan Stamper, and carries Marino down into scoring first and goal from inside the five. They've run it six times, yet to pass. That's Figgins, the backup tight end. Keep it with Marino this time. Spins and gets maybe a yard. Jermaine Cunningham, number 49, with the tackle. Well, you can see with a young offensive line that Georgia has, they've got two true freshmen, a redshirt freshman, against a sack happy defense. The strategy has been keep our guys in this football game on the offensive line by going right at them. That has always been an Achilles heel to this defense this year because of that young defensive tackle play for Florida. Two fullbacks and a tailback. That's Marino on second down. Toss. Marino comes left. Gets down to the one. It'll be third and goal. Jermaine Cunningham, number 49, there to uh, make the tackle. Well, Marino with a career high of 157 yards. Two weeks ago against Vanderbilt, uh, Georgia getting a rare bye open week before this game. First time since 1991 they've had a week off. And I think they feel good about themselves. Everything happened in their favor last week. The, the, the SEC East moved back to them, and they had to be delighted with last week's off week. High formation again. Power to the left side on third and goal. Marino up over the top. Did he break the play? Yes. Georgia touchdown. And here comes the entire team. Watch this for excessive celebration. We may have 15 hankies in the air on this one. I can't believe this. This was planned. This was absolutely planned. Mark Rick decided that he is going to try to fire his team up. He's tired of Florida having the psychological advantage. He's willing to give up the penalty. Look at that. That was a planned move. Well, they are reviewing the well, play. To what see if, if it's he... reversed? <laughs> 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 and did he break the plane? The answer is yes. Would that be something? Get a 15-yard penalty, get it reversed, they'd be back on a 15-yard line. Well, I counted uh, four flags. Some of the officials decided not to participate. I, I love what Georgia has done here. They are not going to back down an inch. They are going to say, Florida, we are in your face. We're tired of losing to you. We don't care about no lousy 15 yards. Now, Urban Meyer's out having a discussion. Take another look. No Sean Marino. I think that uh, goal line view seemed to verify the fact that the ball did cross yeah, they, the plane. They signaled before the ball went out. They signaled the two linesmen that it was a touchdown. Watch up here. The right. signal is going to come. There. Touchdown. On the field is confirmed. Touchdown. We will now discuss the penalty enforcement. <laughs> now we will discuss the penalty. 
That looked like a Mormon Tabernacle Choir breakout. You know, I, I think that was a message to, Flor to Florida, also a message to Georgia fans that we are tired of being stomped on in this football game. Nine plays, 39 yards, took just under five minutes. All nine plays on the ground. Here's Penn Wagers, who will uh, talk things over with Derek Harvey and Tony Joyner and Wandy Pierre-Louis. College football's great, isn't it? it that was fun. That, that'll be, I'll tell you what, Georgia wins this game. That'll go down. After the play is over. Unsportsmanlike on the Georgia bench coming on the football field. That penalty will go to the kickoff. Also, the dead ball, unsportsmanlike, on number 75 on Georgia, will also be on the kickoff. There will be a 30-yard penalty for the kickoff. They got a kickoff right from now. the goal line. Now, no, it'll be half the distance, okay. I assume, obviously. <laughs> they backed it up, and so, actually, if I was if I was Florida, I wonder if they wouldn't want to back up one of these. No, Kutu's too good of a kicker. It would probably be better to take them both on the kickoff. Brandon Kutu for the extra point. He's never missed an extra point in his career. 88 for 88. Good. And Irving look at Florida. Meyer. Yeah, look at that. They've masked at the fourth. <laughs> and Urban says, are you guys ready? It's going to be a fight. There's number 15. You know what I'll say about number 15 right now? He's not going to think about that shoulder the rest of this football game. Tony Joyner. Tebow's ready. Joyner's ready. Forget the bruised shoulder. Toyota presents Heroes of the Fall. I can remember as a freshman uh, coming down here in Florida, were ranked, they were ranked number one in the nation. But we didn't have anything to lose. And, uh, you know, the people had picked Florida to just destroy us. We were down on our own goal line almost, and uh, we actually had a play called 58 Sweep. I just hit the hole, my shoe came off, went back on, and I, I said to myself, I am not going to let this guy catch me. And I ran out completely across the other side of the field, scored a touchdown. When we played Florida in 88, and uh, I actually had two touchdowns, and I put the nail in the coffin with a 50-yard touchdown run, and actually we defeated Emmett Smith and shut him down that day. Just those two wins over Florida, is just, it just stands out in my whole college career. Toyota, moving forward. Well, just a little bit of fun in this ball game. This was the fumble. Keiston Moore picked up on one hop by Asher Allen. And that was followed nine plays later on this touchdown by Noshan Marino. And Gary? <laughs> then the message came up. I think they were happy. Look at right here in the middle. You're going to see number 75, Velasco, is going to get the taunting penalty when he dances. No, it's actually it is 77. 77. Yes, right there. There's the there's the taunting. I think Mark Rick was happy with one penalty. I don't think he expected two. They're going to kick off from the seven and a half yard line. And look what Urban Meyer said. Let's go. These guys want to take us on. They're calling us out. Let's see if we can answer. And nine plays on the ground. Look at that. Nine straight rushes. All right, now, Brandon James back to return the kickoff. A week ago in Kentucky, they kicked to him. That's right. And he returned it 61 yards. Have you ever seen anything like this? No. I've never seen anything like this. Two penalties, and deservedly so. Like I said, Mark Rick expected one, a kickoff from the 15, but not the other one. Katu will kick off. High and very short. And it bounces, picked up, not by the guy you'd expected. This is Eric Rutledge, and I gather this is the first time this season that he's had his hands on the football. He's a fullback, and now we got some more jawing going on, and a flag at the 50. Testy. Oh, boy, that now you got to slow it down if you're Georgia. you got to now... Con Control yourself. Florida's all hyped up. They get one. Look at that. Mark Rick, the mild-mannered one. After the play is over. Personal foul. 43 on the receiving team. Penalty 15 yards. 
James step. Smith, who's the long snapper on this team. And now he's got to explain himself to Urban Meyer. And, and look at the field position. This is where you would you'd normally have field position on a regular kickoff. So the whole thing has been a success for Mark Rick. And for the second time, Florida goes on offense, this time trailing by seven. Hand off to Harvin out of the backfield. He goes left, gets a block, scoots around the corner, comes back to the right. He is elusive. And he might have enough for a first down. And he is jawing at the Georgia Bay. Oh, yeah, it's, it isn't going to stop in this football game. You show any weakness out there right now, and you're going to get trampled. Look at Mark Rick. <laughs> Huge grin. Now, who can play at this high intensity level and still think? That's the key. You still have to be able to think and do your assignments. Rutledge, man who returned the kickoff, is in. He's tight to the right side. Percy Harvin is lined up. Hyde Harvin, he's in the backfield. Option play. Tebow, pitch to Harvin. That's a little block in the corner. He's got a little bit of speed as well. First down at the 40-yard line, a gain of 17. Well, I'll tell you, you can see the adjustment that Florida has made. Keystons Moore's fumble has made Harvin the featured back. Now they're hiding him again. They got him in the back back here. There's he is. They're going to run the option. Tebow used to keep it a lot more. In this game, he's giving it to his other guys. I thought there was a chance that Harvin could have cut it, the field, by the way, is not in great shape. There was a Monday night football game here played. Indianapolis against Jacksonville, and the field is somewhat tore up. There's been rain off and on throughout the week, including most of yesterday. Here's Tebow with a play fake. Deep left corner, man coverage. Battle for the ball. Touchdown, Florida. Lewis Murphy. He caught a 66-yarder from Tebow last week in Lexington. This one goes for 40. I'll tell you, you can't play it much worse than Georgia did. The safety Jones should have had this one eaten up. Isol to the outside. Murphy, watch the safety come in. He's got it the whole way and misses the ball. That is, as a defensive coordinator, just heartbreaking that you've got your guy in position. He does not make the play. I don't blame Penn Wagers for getting confused. Well, with all it, he's had to deal with. Exactly. Right. <laughs> he wasn't in on the game plan either for Mark, was he? <laughs> Joey Eos will try the extra point. Lewis Murphy, the junior from St. Petersburg, a 40-yard catch from Tebow. Why right, Tebow gets all the ink for his power running, but his deep throws this year, they don't look pretty, but they produce points. Now it's time for the playbook presented by the Hartford. Sometimes reputation can have an effect on a play. This is Harvin in the slot. Watch the save at the Rasheed Jones. As Harvin comes out, he hangs. He hangs just a little bit too long when you're still right there. Now, Jones should have made the play, but just that little bit of Harvin down the seed forced Jones to stay with the slot just a little bit too long, and then he should have made the play. I'm not saying that, but when you throw the ball up like that, I think Tebow says, I might have got away with that one, but we definitely answered the bell. And so the touchdown toss to that man, Lewis Murphy, of 40 yards. And uh, Joey Eos will kick off. Murphy. Here's Joey Eos, given a scholarship last summer. Was the backup last year. Originally wanted to play soccer at East Carolina. And he winds up on the defending national champions. This is Alan Asher, Ash, Asher Allen. And the hit made at the 15-yard line. Justin Williams, number 87. First down and 10. Matthew Stafford yet to throw the ball. This is the second Georgia possession.
Marino hit behind the line, driven down. Dustin Doe with the tackle. Now, I think, Gary, he's on your short list of the Heisman candidates. Absolutely. Right? He wins yeah. that football game. He's going to be top three at least. Second down and 12, a loss of two, ball at the 16. Stafford with a play fake will throw for the first time in the ball game. Has a man open. Massaqua. Now he's got some room. Massaqua all the way. Georgia touchdown. 84 yards. He's had trouble over the years holding on to the football. Wow. He had to really stretch for this one. Yeah, he drops this one. No, he might just want to keep running out the tunnel because you cannot throw a ball. And Stafford got rocked on the throw by Harvey, I believe. See, that's why I like, you know, Florida's going to be fired up anyway. You might as well call him out because you're in for a battle anyway. And I think Georgia has said, we need to score. Let's do it. You cannot throw a ball any better than this. It was a great catch, though. I agree with you, Vern. But it was a perfect throw. Run, 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 run. Bullet. That, what a bullet, too. Oh. After the play is over, unsportsmanlike conduct. Number one on Georgia. Penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Mohamed Massaqua from Charlotte. Same high school as the backup quarterback, Joe Cox, in the same high school as the former Florida leader, Chris Leak. Independence on. Extra point is up and good. Massaqua one-on-one -on -one to the outside with the freshman, Joe Hayden. Beats him right off the ball. Then Tony Joyner takes a poor angle. Joyner in the secondary. He's usually a guy that's more comfortable closer to the line of scrimmage. And at the end, Massaqua gives him a gator. That one wasn't planned. Fourteen seven after the 84 yard scoring strike Matthew Stafford to Mohammed Massaqua 340 to go in the first quarter and that was the longest here is a Massaqua with his second touchdown catch of the year Tony Joyner was beaten on the play his fellow safety safety I beg your pardon major right the few freshmen not playing today but that was Joyner who uh, was beaten badly on that play major right his place has been taken by Kyle Jackson. Yes, and remember, this was Reggie Nelson's spot that covered up all those mistakes. Major Wright, a young freshman, was doing it pretty well. Tony Joyner showed he's not comfortable playing deep in the secondary. Here's the kick after the penalty for taunting. This is Brandon James at the 16. Out of one tackle, little stiff arm. He can't get by the third. Flags are thrown. Andrew Williams, a free safety with the tackle, number 47. We have had a flag fest this afternoon. Personal foul, grasping the face mask, number 47 on Georgia. After the play, personal foul, grasping the face mask, also against Georgia. 30 wow. yard penalty. I think Georgia fans have a right be a little upset on that one because I think there was face mask by both sides on that play. How about that two back two 30 yard penalties in this football game already. Other than uh, no no I not in college football I haven't I don't I've never seen wow. that. The reason it says 52 yards because the second one was half the distance to the goal before. Right. And so, after the back-to-back -back penalties, Florida, trailing by seven, has a first down at the 33-yard line. Tebow, no runs so far. Harvin. Inside the 30, down to the 28. Let's check in with Tracy Wilson. Thanks, guys. Here's a bit of an explanation for this high intensity on the Georgia sideline. A source told me that head coach Mark Rick told his team in the locker room, have fun, celebrate, have
have a good day. He did tell me that that rush after the touchdown was not planned. It was completely spontaneous, but so far, they're having fun out there, guys. I don't think Mark Rick is, uh, I've never known him to be deceitful. I'm but not I don't that I don't, I'm not either. <laughs> Tracy, I trust your source. <laughs> I think that was not extemporaneous. Here's Harvin going right, breaking tackles, and down to the 12-yard line. Well, Urban Meyer, you can tell, has had enough with not no production from the tailback. And especially in this game, with a banged-up quarterback. Now, listen, we're almost through the first quarter here. Tebow has not run the ball. He must get production from the tailback. And basically, you're seeing Harvin running tailback now. He's doing the Reggie Bush job that a lot of people thought he was Reggie Bush when he came in. He's showing you he can play just like him. Four carries, 47 yards. Keaston Moore is on now. It was his fumble that now Tebow comes out to the right side. Direct snap, and Moore fumbles it. Jeez. Holy cow. Georgia believes they've got it. Keaston Moore had to go right through his hands. You draw up, up, up on the blackboard, they look good, but when you do them during the game, they're a little harder to execute. This is a right shoulder call. A right shoulder Tebow call, if you ask me. Well, a long time unraveling the bodies. Apparently, Florida has retained possession. And now Brandon James will come in at tailback. Urban Meyer is chatting with Keiston Moore. Yeah, we, we're not going to try to read his lips on that one. Uh -uh. What are you doing? I skipped the word there, but what are you doing? And Florida is very fortunate to have the ball back. Second down and 22, Brandon James and Harvin. Now Harvin goes in a slot to the left. Tebow with an empty backfield. Line calls being made. Georgia brings five. Tebow sacked for the second time. Cade Weston, number 91, was the first one there. There was no mystery here. Georgia was telling Florida they're coming with the blitz. I mean, you look back, the back seven, here's man, 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 man. They are playing, covering the five wide receivers. It is an all-out blitz. Six are coming on it, and they are getting the ball out of Tebow's hands right here. Six come, five cover. Florida cannot pick it up. Third and 26. From the 29. That's Brandon James alongside Tebow. Five come this time, Tebow. He's sacked for the third time. Coming into the game in the first half of the season, five sacks total. I'll, I'll give credit to Georgia's game plan here. Now remember, they had the bye week. Before, it has been Florida having the bye week. They are ready. They're giving Florida blitz packages, and their front four, that time it was Cade Weston, is playing more physical football than Florida's offensive line. It's fourth down. Joey Eos, longest punt, a field goal, I beg your pardon, of the season, 32 yards. And it would be a 52-yarder, so I don't think that's an option here. Oh, my. I don't think it's a big deal. I think Florida was going to punt anyway, to tell you the truth, on the delay. Eos, as we said, longest kick of the season, 32 yards. And so Chaz Henry, the freshman, comes on to punt. For the season now, another whistle. We have reached the end of the first quarter. Well, after a 30-yard penalty on back-to-back -back face masks, they were in great shape. Yeah, they were, and they tried to change it up. It's something Florida has not showed. That was a good snap, and Urban Meyer is going, come on, 
it's one thing competing, but you've got to execute. And Keystone Moore right now is in Urban's doghouse. Appropriate since they're yes. playing the Bulldogs. <laughs> That's the end of the first quarter. 14-7 will return after this message and a word from your local station. Gracious. Well, they've got Ugga the sixth cage. They don't want him to get a penalty. 14 to 7 as we start the second quarter. He puts on any more weight, they're going to have to get a bigger cage, yeah. Ugga, don't you think? He is not a small child. <laughs> not at all. On fourth down as we start the second, Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, and Tracy Wolfson. And this annual bitter rivalry between these two. Jazz Henry will punt. Thomas Flowers awaits it. Beautiful. Perfect. Beautiful. Brandon James down underneath. Great field position now defensively for the Florida Gators. First time, Gary, that these two such highly regarded sophomore quarterbacks, Tim Tebow and Matthew Stafford, have gotten together. Well, look what's happened in the first quarter. Matthew Stafford, who's the passer, has thrown one pass, 84 yards. And Tim Tebow, the runner, has not rushed in this game yet. He's been sacked three times, and he's been hit four times. So this game is all Georgia right now. Everything's going their way, and the game plan has unfolded. I don't think Mark Rick could have it any other better. And he had that extra week, and I think he planned this to a T so far. His team, however, now backed up at the one. No Sean Marino. Play fake. Stafford wants to throw. Off his back truck, intercepted. Wandy Louis Pierre. Touchdown, Florida. That's 15 yards. First interception of the season for 1D. Pierre Louis, I got his name <laughs> backwards a moment ago. I'll tell you, Tony Joyner, we said he's better close to the line of scrimmage. And I think it was Tony Joyner that forced that throw deep. Wandy Pierre he is going to catch an ear feel after he caught almost a punt from Matthew Stafford. Here's Penn Wagers. That penalty will be taken to the kickoff. Little lack of this. I know, I understand it's an emotional game. You said a while ago it's who can think through all yeah, this. Yeah, right. And, and Matthew Stafford did not think on that one. The one thing that everyone is afraid of with Stafford is he loves his arm too much. He thinks he can throw it from any position. He got caught on that one. Extra point is up and good from Joey Eos. It's a one-man pass route. A one-man pass route right there. Watch this. The pressure's coming from Joyner to the outside. Joyner outside goes to the It was not Joyner. I looked at that again, but look at that. That was like catching a punt at the 25-yard line. A.J. Jones, was the linebacker it? got So there. it was an all-out rush. A.J. Jones is the guy. And, and, you know, when you're a quarterback and you're in your end zone, you think you can get that ball off, you better block the linebacker. He does the push, but he gets 15 yards. On your left, Matthew Stafford. Both of his throws today have gone for touchdowns. <laughs> one to his own man, one to the guy on your right. That's right. Wandy Pierre-Louis from Haiti. And look at the penalties. Five and three, and four of those have been for uh, unsportsmanlike conduct. Wow. Joey Eos will kick off. And uh, two other major ones also. What, the face mask twice? And then a couple of small ones sprinkled in. 14-14 in Jacksonville. After the penalty, the kick from the 15. This is Asher Allen, number two. Out to the 38, perhaps the 39-yard line. Get complete coverage of all today's action and watch an exclusive SEC college football highlight show tonight on CBSSports.com.
Com. Fourteen, fourteen. Matthew Stafford back in the left. And I think Georgia now goes back to Marino. That was successful early. Will they now not go back to Marino and start running this football like they did to start the football game? No, Sean Marino started the year as the third team tailback behind Thomas Brown and Greg Lumpkin. Both of them are out with injuries. Lumpkin probably won't be back until a bowl game. Thomas Brown might be back against Auburn. Here's the handoff. Marino cuts to his left, bangs down to the 44-yard line. Well, the Georgia offense thus far today, Gary. Yeah, it started out with, I think, Georgia taking a page from Auburn's book, a page a little bit from LSU's book, and once they established that, they went to that rocket arm of Matthew Stafford and then trying to get another big play from their own end zone. A.J. Jones was the guy who put the pressure on, and uh, Stafford, as you said, one for two, both caught, one for the red and one for the blue. Mikey Anderson is uh, Henderson is on the field now. Here's the handoff right side. It'll be third down. I was in Minneapolis on Tuesday night meeting with some folks at Mount Olive and Lutheran Church, and they could not get over the North Dakota State loss. Here's a third down. Right side. Pass caught. First down. That's Marino out of the backfield. He's the second leading receiver on this ball club. But only with uh, now 16 catches for this the was, year. This was an impressive catch right here. Quick out to the outside. You got a running back. Nice stick. Puts his left foot in the ground. Very sharp throw. You know, when you got running backs that can do that and run the way he does, he's very, very valuable. First down and 10. And off right side, Marino starts right, goes back left, gets back to the line of scrimmage. Dustin Doe, number 32, made the tackle. Dustin Doe, no gain of the play, second and ten. Sean Bailey goes wide left. Deep handoff, Marino. It'll be third and long at the 44-yard line. This Florida defense gashed early, but they've always managed to, people are starting to run on them, bring those safeties up and start playing those eight-man fronts and force you into a passing game. They don't have the great individual players up front as the pass against the run, but with the scheme and speed and those linebackers and safeties, they force you to do a lot of different things. Torrey Davis and Terrence Sanders, a couple of freshman defensive linemen, are on the field right now. It's third and nine in a tie game. Matthew Stafford. Four-man rush. Stafford is forced out of the pocket. And he's going to come up short of the first down at the 39-yard line. Uh, we have a long way to go. Right. <laughs> now, here's Brandon Cattu. This will be from 56 yards, the longest of his career, 58 yards. He is 5 of 10 over the course of his career from beyond 50. From 56, low. And not good. I think Mark Rick is saying, what was that? Yeah, the, the clock, they were trying to call timeout, Mark Rick was, because the clock was running down so much before the kick. I think he was upset that he did not get seen with a timeout call. And so the... Uh, I'm, the sh I'm sure he was, Vern. I just think he was. Look at him see the clock. Back in Jacksonville, let's take a look at Home Depot's Tools for Success. Well, there's been so much talk this year about the spread offense and where it arrived from. It used to be the wing tee. There's Johnny Majors back with Tennessee. 
Look at the center, though. The difference back then, the center had his head between his legs. That kind of came out of vogue, but you see the same basic play. Look at the center's head now. He's up, he's blocking, same type of power. Wing T offense from the spread with Tebow, but look at the difference. Now the evolution has been five wideouts, and you can run or pass the ball or put one of these dangerous guys in motion and run the option. The evolution of the wing T from Tebow back to Johnny Majors and back to Tebow. Johnny Majors looked bigger there, but I think he's like 5'9", 170. Tebow, 6'3", 240, probably. Johnny Majors uh, has moved back to Knoxville, Tennessee. He lived in Pittsburgh for a long, long time. And uh, back in Knoxville now. First down and 10. Here's Tebow, play fake. Back to throw, deep right side, man open. And it's caught by Faison. Jared Faison, number 11. That's only his third catch of the year. It's good for a 25-yard game. Weapons, weapons, weapons. Faison's in the slot. He's playing Harvin's spot because the ball that time was faked to Harvin. How about that? Lewis Murphy going long. Fake the ball to Harvin. You can run the ball with Tebow, or you throw the ball to Faison coming off the bench. How about the game plan for Florida? Oh, you can see. You can see they're protecting Tebow's shoulder. He still, I'm looking at the stats, has not rushed the ball yet. He has completed five of five. This is Brandon James along his left. Georgia with four down. Brandon James keeps it. Breaks the initial contact and gets inside the 30. Jarius win number 99. But look at this outside. You think tailgating isn't popular here? <laughs> these folks have left. They're watching these huge screens here by the banks of the St. John River. Sellout crowd, of course. Can they hear us? If we said wave or something like that, would they be able to hear us? I, I don't gotta know. we got to try that shot a little bit later. Yeah, but you know what's embarrassing? If you say wave and nobody reacts. Yeah, well, <laughs> they didn't buy a ticket. What do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Second and four. Another motion play. This is Tebow. They fumbled this the last time. And uh, this is Percy Harvin instead of Keiston Moore. Timeout called. Florida. That's their second. So, so far, Urban is better of getting in front of the linesman than Mark Richt is. <laughs> Clock was running down. Tebow's going to go in motion. See, I actually, uh, they, Urban kind of sensed this, that this would have been a delay of game, and he got in front of the official and made the timeout call. Florida with one timeout remaining. Tie game. Nine fourteen to go. Fourteen fourteen. There's Urban Meyer right there. Now watch it. He's going to come in. He senses this. He knows what's going to happen, and he gets right in front. Calls a timeout. Good job, Urban. And so it's a second down. Florida uses its second timeout. Brandon James, Eric Rutledge in the backfield. David Nelson is an extra wide receiver. There's the give. Brandon James, he's got a first down plus to the 23-yard line. And how about Tim Tebow and what he's done today? Yeah, the Tebow attack track. We were ready. Uh-oh. Nothing. 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 We've uh, extracted the attack track here. <laughs> you know, you draw really well. <laughs> I like that. I'm liking the circle highlight thing right Yeah. Here. Well, Percy Harvin is in now. I don't know if we're going to see much of Keiston Moore. He uh, muffed a direct snap and also fumbled in the first quarter. Here's Tebow under pressure, fires it out. It's incomplete. Boy, was somebody right in the face. It looked like it might have been Marcus Howard, number 38. And a little more on Keiston Moore. Here's Tracy. Thanks, guys. As you mentioned, Keiston Moore in the coach's doghouse because of the two fumbles. Meyer went up, Myers went up to Brandon James on the bench before this drive and said, you're in. James, who struggled with an ankle injury, had it retaped for reinforcement. As for Moore, he's still right there on the sideline waiting to go in if he gets the OK. Uh, that could be a long wait. This was earlier after he had muffed the direct snap on a play they'd put in and Urban Meyer doing a little coaching. Yes. Second down. Inside shovel play. Brandon James caught and dropped 
Danell Ellerby, number 33, led the charge. It's funny, I, I all, this week, and I asked Urban a couple times, where's your inside shovel option? I said, I haven't seen it this year. And he right away said, well, I remember that SEC championship when Arkansas intercepted one for a touchdown, and the other made the other good point. In this conference, with these defensive ends, they play both the quarterback and the pitch, and he does not feel as much confident in that play as he did at Utah or Bowling Green. Third and nine, Caldwell is wide right. Four receivers to the left. Georgia with three down, but they'll bring at least four. They will bring five. Tebow sacked for the fourth time. They are one away, Georgia is, of equaling the number of sacks against this Florida offensive line in the first seven games. Well, you're going to see this guy right here sneak in and be the next blitzer. Sneaking from the backside is Keelan Johnson. He's the one that comes in and forces and breaks down, and Geno Atkins is able to get in there and make it. But Willie Martinez has been dialing him up in this game. He's had two weeks to prepare, and he has dialed up something that Florida is not used to seeing. 43 yards. This would be the longest of the season for Joey Eos. He's got plenty of distance. Eos from 43 breaks the tie. Florida leads 17-14. Previous long was 32. That one right through the heart. Young man from Clearwater, Florida mentioned he was given a scholarship when he made a 52-yard field goal last summer in practice. All right, Tim, about two miles away from Jacksonville Municipal Stadium, this is the Jacksonville landing. And this is the heart of most of the pregame frivolity. Oh, look at that. They're all waving. They're yeah. dialed in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Right by the St. John's River. And uh, the Jacksonville, Jacksonville Municipal Stadium up to the right. You see downtown Jacksonville. 17-14, Eos, who just kicked the 43-yard field goal, will kick off. We had no undue celebration on the last play, oh, yeah. so he kicks off from the 30. Different. This is Asher Allen, number two. Nice juke. And he gets 15 extra yards out to the 35. And Major Wright is on the special teams and uh, a part of that tackle. Time now for... Trivia question of the week. What single wing quarterback led his team to victory in the Georgia Florida series on his way to winning the Heisman Trophy? Johnny Majors was not. He's in the, he's in the running. Yeah. Nope, that is not the answer. Well, a big stop for Georgia last time with that offense. They bowed bo up a little bit, held them to a field goal. Let's see what happens. First down and 10 at the 35. Stafford. Sean Bailey can't hang on. It's an incomplete pass. Stafford's pass intended for number four, Sean Bailey. Second down. Well, that's the nightmare from a year ago in this football game when Georgia dropped all those passes, lost the football game 21-14, had five turnovers plus the drop passes. Uh, a little bit of Kentucky offense there. The finesse screen pass coming out of the blocks on first down. At a second down and 10, Georgia trailing by three. Now Stafford emulates Tebow. There's a direct snap right side, no Sean Marino. And he gouges out yardage to the 41-yard line. Dustin Doe makes the tackle. Well, this play has been so devastating, the direct snap. It was started a year ago to McFadden at Arkansas. Everyone has it in their game plan. Obviously, a lot of teams don't have a Tebow to run it, and Georgia doesn't want Stafford running it. No. <laughs> Good uh, no, you're right. Third and four. Stafford flips it out right side. Marino cuts back inside. He's got a first down. 
near the 47-yard line. Well, in man-to-man -man coverage, two free safeties. Jermaine Cunningham, number 49. You'll see him. He's got the back. Marino, look at Cunningham have to stop. Cannot make the play. Good block on spikes, and Marino shows you that flash and dash with the football. Really an outstanding-looking football player. Third down conversion, a first down and 10. Stafford for the day, 3 of 5. 100 yards. He'll throw now, play action on first down, looks deep. Goes deep into double coverage and overthrows everybody. Yeah, I think that was by design. Safety was over on the play. Kyle Wright was on the on it that time. And there, excuse me, Kyle Jackson was on the play that time. And uh, Stafford tossed that one where nobody could get it. A lot of changes around the offensive line now. Vince Vance has come in at left guard. And Trenton Sturdivant is out. Now there's Sturdivant. I beg your pardon. He's at left tackle. Vance at left guard. Second down and 10. Florida brings a man from the corner. Across the middle, Sean Bailey. First down at the 25. Well, that corner position for Florida has been a problem. You see it pressed bail. This is where Hayden is trying to drive the receiver to the inside. And last year, where Reggie Nelson blows that play up, Kyle Jackson's a half step slower. Good throw, and that makes the play. See the numbers for 2005 and 2007. Bailey sat out all of last year with a knee injury. Here's Trip Chandler, the tight end. They hand it off to Marino. He comes right, tests the middle, and scoots inside the uh, 20 to the 17-yard line. Well, that's the 24th play of the game, I think, for Georgia. Yes, 24 plays. Marino has 15 rushes and two receptions. So on 17 of the 24 plays, Marino is the guy. You know, we've done uh, three Florida games this year. We usually are saying yeah, right. Tebow is exactly. the guy. Exactly. But you can see the tailback. And without Lumpkin and Brown, he is getting the workload. Sutherland's in as a fullback now as they go from the eye to power eye. That's Figgins, the tight end. Play fake. Stafford deep in the end zone for his tight end just beyond his reach. Trip Chandler, the intended receiver. In a 17-14 game with 431 to go. Lawrence Marsh, the redshirt freshman wearing number 90, is on defensively in the line for Florida. Stafford, quarterback draw. Goes right. He's to the 10. First and goal. Georgia. Not something you'd expect. Well, when you're laying it on the line, and if you're going to beat Florida, you got to play 11 on 11. Watch Sutherland right here, 36. That's who this is going to be. Quarterback draw all the way. Follow, follow Sutherland. Good block. Fits it really well that time, and that's exactly where Stafford goes. Urban Meyer has only lost six times at Florida. Each time, the winning team has scored more than 20 points. Georgia has a chance now to get over 20 points. And that's not something they've done often in this series since 1990. Here's Marino, right side. On first down, it'll be second and goal. It's going to be tough nine yards here. To think that you can run the ball three straight times and pick up nine yards to score against Florida will overload the line of scrimmage and force you into throwing situation here. Well, as we've said, Gary, in this series, Georgia Difficult yes. finding points. Last 17 games, a 2 and 15 record. They've averaged less than 17. A matchup, better matchup up here than the bottom. It's bracketed to the bottom where Sean Bailey is. Oh man, that's going to be a penalty. Stafford took, took a knee. He did. There was a Florida defensive lineman in the neutral zone. The center snapped it. Stafford took a knee. Two flags down. Was it Mc... McMillan? McMillan. Was it it McMillan? was McMillan. 
Stafford clearly had taken a knee, but the referee did not blow his whistle. Listen and see if you hear a whistle. That was strange. Players should know if someone takes a knee, though. There he is. No line, a scrimmage infraction. There was no one in the end zone. The ball was snapped. The quarterback went down on the ground after the play. Quarterback was clearly down. Dead ball, personal foul against Florida. Urban Meyer obviously disagreeing with uh, Penn Wager's interpretation. All right, watch the Florida player go into the neutral zone from the middle. The ball is snapped. That is a bad call. I'm telling you, the center snapped the ball when the Florida player was in the neutral zone. Watch this. Watch the ball by Velasco get snapped right there. That is a penalty. Lawrence Marsh. Absolutely. Marsh was in the neutral zone, and then that is obviously a 15-yard penalty after the way. But it should be a five-yarder, then a 15-yarder. Instead, it's first down and goal, Georgia. They hand it to the fullback. Sutherland, he's a touchdown maker, but this time there's a flag back at the 12-yard line. Illegal procedure, Georgia. When the official calls it, that usually means a running back kind of flinches or doesn't come to a stop. Prior to the snap, false start. 72 on the offense, 35 yards. Now remain first. Vince Vance. Yes, it was. Sounds like the leader of a rock and roll group from the 60s. Well, right now, he doesn't want to be the lead, that's for sure. There's Vance right there. He'd be like to be the background uh, drummer or bass guy because he's got the lead right there, shifting up front. Dallas folks will remember Vince Vance and the Valiants. And, and look where Sorry. they're back, right where they were before when the series started. First and goal from the nine. First and goal. Stafford out of the spread, now comes up. Better numbers up here. Then to the bottom where Bailey's getting bracketed. Stafford quarterback draw again, nothing. Down to the 10. Lawrence Marsh, number 90. 235 to go, 17-14. Let's look at what we're talking about here. Georgia has three receivers. Okay, right here we got two defensive backs covering one. But to the top, you've got one-on-one. -on -one. That's where the ball should go if you get this look. Second and goal from the 10. This is Marsh, redshirt freshman. Massaquois, top of the screen. Tony Wilson is in the slot. This is Sutherland in motion. Inside handoff, Marino tries to dart outside. Nothing there. He'll make something. And he plunges for the goal line. Touchdown, Georgia. Georgia has answered the bell in this football game. They were aware of those numbers that we talked about at the beginning. They have been so aggressive. I think Mark Rick is learning from his Florida State gaze. The only way to play Florida, as you watch the play right here, and is to go at them. You have to be tough, you have to be physical, and you have to be aggressive. And they have been all three. It's a draw one way, it's stopped. Marino bounces off, goes the other way. What? A exhilarating run. Does he get in? I think so. I did, too. He sticks his left hand down and puts the ball over the line. Looks good. Don't you think? I think so. How about that? 20 or 21 points in the first half, and in 15 losses, only three times they score more than 17 points going into this football game. After he drew, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. Well, you said as we came on the air, you thought their target number of points was 28. At least 28. When you're playing Florida, you have to at least figure you're going to have to score 28, but it's a different Florida team with a nicked up Tebow. We can see that. Brandon Couture with the extra point. 
That was a marvelous run by Noshawn Marino, the young man from Belford, New Jersey. Heads to his left, dives for the end zone. Touchdown, Bulldogs. They lead by four. No Sean Marino with the touchdown. A wonderful run as he uh, headed right, was stopped, rolled off the tackle, went left, and then dived over the end zone. Now, Gators have used two timeouts. They minute, have one left. Minute 48 to go in this half, and... This is the time, now this is the time when you don't know if Tebow is comfortable. He's two-minute drills. He always had the element of the scramble before. Will he use it now? Brandon James, number 25, with the return. But not very far. Out to the 20-yard line, and it's time now to welcome back the Duck and the answer to our trivia question what single wing quarterback won the Georgia Florida game the same year that he won the Heisman Frank Sinkwich in 1942 look at that single wing fake it around run it Frank Sinkwich handsome left back in the early 40s first down and 10 this will be very interesting, the play calling from right here, because a turnover really could change the game before half. Turnovers are even at one apiece. The handoff, Harvin, we've, yep, uh, yep. we've not seen Keiston Moore since uh, fumble in the first quarter. And then a muffed snap. Corey Irvin, number 90, makes that tackle. Coming up, the Geico Halftime Report. We'll be going back to New York with Tim and Spencer, all the scores and highlights here on this weekend in college football. The adjustment to Harvin in the backfield may help the running, but it's hurting the passing game. Remember the touchdown pass when Harvin drew coverage? They are a better football team, I believe, when he's out in this slot like he is right now. Now Cornelius Ingram, CI they call him, leans back in and listens to Tim Tebow. Quarterback draw, his first run of the ball game. Looks for help. He's down at the 26-yard line. That is his first run this afternoon. And I, I thought it was not the aggressive Tebow we've seen in the past. Now watch him just look for a spot. Before, he would look for somebody to hit. Watch him look for space, kind of start to get down and protect that shoulder. Listen, you cut your face shaving, it bleeds for a week after you shave. If you get a bruised shoulder, it's going to hurt for at least a week. Extra padding on that right shoulder this afternoon, as Tracy told you. Here's the fake. Tebow, Caldwell, tipped. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, that, that was a... That, I, I don't quite understand that call. Because for Florida now, they're going to be forced to punt. Obviously, Florida, with under 20 seconds, was not going to score in this drive. Now you forced a punt, a bad snap, a blocked punt. Uh, I, I think it would have been better for Florida to run the ball there and at least force Georgia to use another timeout. In the middle, Dan Mullen, offensive coordinator at the age of 35. Young man who played collegiate football at Ursinus College. Thomas Flowers is back to return it. Wearing number six today, normally number 29. That's a nice punt by Chaz Henry. And Flowers backs up, takes the grab at the 22-yard line. 54-yard punt, nothing on the return. Three seconds to go before the break. Well, that was a spectacular first half. The adjustments that Georgia has made, the answer by Florida. They're playing around Tebow's shoulder. You doesn't get any better than this. A Georgia team that has won twice in the last 17 encounters. They came into this game undefeated in 2002, lost 20 to 13, a nighttime game. That was Georgia's only defeat in a 13 to one year. Matthew Stafford takes a knee. He found Massaqua for an 84-yard touchdown. Tim Tebow limited to one rush in the first half. And the resilient Georgia Bulldogs come from three down to go four up at the break. Mark Richt is with Tracy Wilson. Thanks, Vern. 
four sacks on Tebow. How have you been able to get so much pressure on him? Well, we brought a few things uh, from the perimeter and, uh, and just our linebacking core. I'm not sure we've gotten him without pressuring him yet, but uh, Coach Martinez has done a nice job of bringing the pressures at the right time. We've been talking all day about the intensity of this team. It started when your whole team rushed onto the field after that first touchdown. Was that planned? I told them if they didn't get a penalty for a celebration after the first score, I was going to be mad at them. Thanks a lot, Coach. Okay, <laughs> Answers that, doesn't Great. it? <laughs> That's terrific. Here was the first touchdown. No Sean Marino from on top. Let's go back to Tim Brando in New York. Uh, he's doing court kit, that Mark Rick, isn't he? Thanks, Vern. Coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, how Arkansas and Vanderbilt did today when the Geico Halftime Report continues. Halftime in Jacksonville, a crowd in excess of 80,000. Georgia leads at 21-17, and they get the ball to open the third quarter. The Bulldogs 4-0. and zero. When leading at the half in 2007, Florida's only other halftime deficit came at home in a loss to Auburn. Asher Allen is back. Here is the kick. This one boomed. It will be returned from three yards inside the end zone Allen to the 30 yard line and a couple of minutes ago Tracy Wilson had a chance to chat with Urban Meyer coach how is Tim Tebow's shoulder holding up I think he's holding up I think he's a little sore but he's holding up fine and we just got to execute a little better on offense how has his injury affected your game plan today <laughs> Oh, I think we're just being a little more cautious with him running the ball, but uh, it, it hasn't affected it that much. Would you see him run more in the second half? Uh, I'm not sure. We, we got to do what we got to do to win this game, but we also got to take care of our quarterback. First down 10, Georgia. At the 30-yard line, here's Matthew Stafford. That one's fired out incomplete. Brandon Smike, uh, Spikes, the middle linebacker. Got down to uh, knock that one loose. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson with you. Uh, Gary, if this thing is in any way analogous to a heavyweight fight, it's pretty obvious that Georgia decided not to be a counterpuncher. They've been aggressive. I think you're exactly right. They came out swinging. They figured we might get knocked out. But I think Mark Rick told his team, I've got experience playing Florida when I was at Florida State. If you back down one inch, they'll smell it. And I want you to be aggressive from the very first play. And let's go toe-to-toe -to -toe and see what happens. Here's the handoff to Noshawn Marino. Breaks the first tackle. And it was Marino who got the first touchdown of this ball game. And the reaction after he scored was memorable. It sure was. First of all, it was a great drive. Remember, it was a running play on every one of the plays. And then he sent his team out there and said, we don't care about stats. We don't care about formations. We don't care about spread. We care about being in this football game and being aggressive. There were the expected penalties for unnecessary celebration. There was an additional penalty for taunting. So 30 yards marked off on the kickoff, but well worth it for Georgia. Here's Marino into the secondary and cut down at the 44 after a 17-yard game. Tony Joyner came from a deep angle that time. He didn't hug it real tightly, and Moreno read it. Watch Joyner right here. He comes deep, and Marino goes inside it. Watch this. Joyner comes, does not close real tight, and that allows that little hole inside of Tony Joyner. Beautiful run with your eyes from Marino. 19 carries for 94 yards for Noshawn Marino, and Georgia calls timeout. Well, he has been the 
kind of the ultra ego of this football team. He's getting a lot of carries because of injuries, and he's producing. There's Ugga the six, the ultimate lead dog. <laughs> As the late Louis Grizzard once said, if you ain't the lead dog, the view never changes. <laughs> Ugga the six. What it looks like. Huh? <laughs> First down and ten. Bulldogs. Stafford hands it off. Marino. Whoa, what a force he's been. Now the chase. There's an angle, and he's knocked out of bounds, but it'll be first and goal. Kyle Jackson caught up with him, but he picked up 42 yards. This is into the teeth of an eight-man front. Well blocked by Georgia. Marino goes over 100 yards. Watch Kyle Jackson. And remember, he's playing the Reggie Nelson spot, the major right spot. How slow he comes up. That was an eraser play last year. This year... There's no eraser and gashed. Good blocking, great running, and Moreno is on his way to a huge day. Brandon Sutherland gets the handoff. And it'll be second down. How about these first half, uh, first half trends, Gary? Well, you can see it. Tebow just one rush. We heard uh, Tracy talk to coach. You can tell that shoulder although they tried to keep it quiet we had the story i think that it was going to be a problem in this game personal fouls i think they've been just an emotional filled game and moreno continues to make the plays a tailback jason johnson who has two carries in his career as the tailback they hand it off to the fullback Sutherland. he is stopped third and goal at the one tony joiner with the tackle brandon sutherland the junior with eight touchdowns on the ground last year. He's got three this year. I think Georgia and Mark Richt will go for this on four downs. 24-17 is not what he wants here. He wants 28 points. No Sean Marino is back on the field. Play fake into the flat. Caught. Touchdown. Brandon Sutherland, his sixth catch of the year, his first touchdown reception of 2007. And when you've got Marino back there, you've got to pay attention. This is the first play-action pass play you put in when you're running on the goal line, just sliding the fullback out in the flat. Everybody has this play. Everybody executes it, and 28 points are on the board for Georgia. After the extra point, it's 28-17. Sutherland. Sutherland's in the guy. Just in the slot, he's going to come right out, right into the flat right there. It was a little quick with my circle there, wasn't it? <laughs> kind of stuck on the screen. You got the idea. It's the version, it's the jump pass to the outside almost for... Georgia 28-17 and a busted up quarterback for Florida. Three times in the red zone, three Georgia touchdowns. Celebration dog style. We are in downtown Jacksonville and don't forget later in the game today, the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. If I'm Florida, I'm putting Harvin back out to the wide receiver spot. I'm going back, and I'm going to say, Tim Tebow, you threw for 8,000 gazillion yards in high school. Let's see if you can throw it, because now we need points, because George is putting them on the board. Bulldogs with 28 points in their 15 losses to Florida in the last 17 years. They averaged 17 points per game. Here's the kick by Brandon Katu, very short. Brandon James moves up, grabs it at the 15. Out of bounds at the 33-yard line. And Katu made the tackle. How about the day for Tim Tebow, bruised shoulder and all? Well, you can tell the game plan has been tried to protect it, but the offense has been wobbly at best. The pass 
some good, but the sacks enough bad. And even when Tim Tebow ran it, he looked like he was trying to get down. And watch at the end of the play, Vern, he pushes himself up with his left arm. He's favoring it. Sacked four times today, coming into the game, five sacks for the season. Percy Harbin. And Tebow goes out to the left. Here's a direct snap to Harbin. Yeah, I don't like it. Nope. Uh, Keiston Moore, of course, uh, has uh, ridden the pines, as they say, because he had two fumbles in the first half. Yeah, yeah you, you see with uh, Keiston Moore right there, you, that's a story, and it's affected the game plan because it's taken Harvin out to, from the outside and another guy that has not been in the game so far in this game and I think is one of the weapon, number seven. There's Harvin, but right next to him is Ingram right there. He has not caught a pass or he had one thrown to him yet. Harvin... That is incomplete. incomplete. It's not a lateral. Has been favored in every sense. Watch this. Reaches out. Now his right elbow, right shoulder, right wrist. Harvin immediately went down for it. And that could be the two main players on this football team with injuries. Tebow and now Harvin. Percy Harvin has spent most of the day in the backfield because they benched Easton Moore. Next to Urban Meyer now with an elbow or arm injury. And uh, Tracy's on her way over. We'll get information as soon as we can. Here's Tebow with an empty backfield. Backs up, steps up inside Lewis Murphy. It will be fourth down. He's short of the first down marker. Prince Miller, number 23, defending. Right now, Willie Martinez, defensive coordinator for Georgia, is in the Florida head. He's been on those third down plays, bringing the blitz and sacking him. That time, he only rushed three. Florida threw very quickly, but not enough to pick it up. Now, in the past, this was Tebow time. Fourth and short. Will it be Tebow time here? Probably the most famous play of his freshman season was a fourth down against Tennessee. That was fourth and two. They do not have Keiston Moore in the backfield. The fullback is Eric Rutledge. Fourth down and one. It's Tebow. Well, he got it. But notice yep. that right shoulder was held back. You know, what's interesting there is they didn't block him much. You know, that Georgia defensive line, watch him stuff this play inside usually Tebow goes straight ahead there was nothing there he was forced to come out he landed on that right elbow but he did pick it up Brandon James in the backfield now Harvin is back on the field good news for the Gators he's in the slot top of the screen here's the handoff to Brandon James the tiny might he's only five six and 180 pounds he runs into Brandon, Brandon Miller number 12 the linebacker Report from Tracy Wolfson that Percy Harvin has a right shoulder bruise, which would be the same injury that's bothered Tim Tebow. Harvin in the backfield. Boy, Ingram is not in the football game. Back to back plays. Second down, eight. Caldwell in the slot now. They hand it to Harvin, he goes left, darts to the outside, gets by Prince Miller, and runs out of bounds with a nice run and a first down for the Gators at the 38-yard line. Eric Rutledge did a nice job of hooking the end man on the line of scrimmage this time, number 29 right there, gets the block, gets outside, and does a good job by Harvin. Harvin carrying the ball in his right shoulder, doesn't want to take anybody on, very, very smart. Uh, Jared Faison is on. Aaron Hernandez, the tight end, heads to the bench. 14-yard gain and a first down at the 38-yard line. Harvin again in the backfield. Play fake. Deep right side, facing wide open. Hit and dropped inside the 10. First and goal, Florida. Second time he's been open in the deep right flat. And the exact same play both times. Both to the right. Run off. Murphy. Bring 
Faison right behind him. Watch, Murphy's going to go long. Faison's going to come and come right in the same angle. Watch this. Nice play. Play action inside. Come to the outside. Give it time. Trail. It's kind of a trail route, wheel route, whatever you want to call it. But it's perfectly timed. Faison comes up like he's going to block, then just kind of sneaks out into the flat. Perfect throw. First and goal. Harvin in the slot to the left. Caldwell is in motion. They hand it off to Brandon James. Again, I keep that. I hate to keep harping yeah. on this, but Keiston Moore, who's their second leading rusher for the year, on the bench because of two fumbles in the first half. That play, though, is reminiscent of a number of times in the past, though, you would see Tebow fake that and keep it right behind him. That has not been in the game plan here today. It's been all handoffs in that situation. Now, when they bring in Faison and they have Harvin in the backfield, they like to run the options down here. Let's see if they come with an option play now. Murphy and Faison go to the left side. Ingram again is still on the bench. That's Rutledge, the fullback, who goes in motion. Tebow. Tebow to the two. There's that ride play where the quarterback just takes the ball and runs with it. It's getting to the point now, Vern, where Tebow has nothing else to do but run the ball. They need him in this attack if they're going to beat Georgia. Now, they trailed by Auburn early in the year by 14 points, and remember, they tied it up. They trail by 11 here. Still anybody's game. Third and goal. Seven. Here's Tebow again. Searches, probes a little bit. Touchdown, Gators. That's his 11th rushing touchdown of the season. Yeah, you don't see both hands going up, do you? No, you don't. That's a one hand come up. Well, actually, it's half a crowd, though. So he's only going it to his side. Because it's 50-50. <laughs> he only needs one hand in this stadium. You're right. He snuck behind it this time. Then he took the power and led with his left arm, if you notice that, too. Joey Eos with the extra point. Cuts it through the right upright. And the Georgia Bulldogs open the third quarter with a sustained drive for a TD. Florida comes right back, and it's 28-24. Well, the combination of the play-action pass and Tebow running, we saw a lot more of the Florida offense that people are used to seeing. Midway through the third quarter, 28-24 in this 75th Jacksonville meeting. And we join the SEC in celebrating 75 years of Southeastern Conference football, perhaps the most famous call in the history of this encounter. 1980, here's Larry Munson. Larry Munson now 85 years of age. Because of health, he's not doing road games. This is the first time since 1965 that Larry has not called this Georgia-Florida rivalry for Georgia Radio Network. And uh, read an article today in the Athens uh, newspaper that Larry said he was going to watch the first half, and he got too tense. He was going fishing. Uh, he's a legend, and deservedly so, and we wish him well. <laughs> Florida will kick off. Asher Allen, number two, dragged down at the 19-yard line by Justin Williams. And uh, let's get an injury update from Tracy Wilson. Trace? Thanks, guys. Florida has been forced to shuffle some things around on their defensive line. Starting nose tackle, Javier Estepinen twisted his left knee. He'll have an MRI done in Gainesville. Backup nose tackle Brandon Antwine didn't make the trip with a back injury. And his backup, Teron Sanders, is out with a left ankle sprain. All right. Thank you, Trace. And here is Matthew Stafford, the sophomore Great arm, quick release. An 84-yard strike in the first half of this game to Muhammad Masakwa. And here's Stafford back to throw. Drills it. That's Sean Bailey, number four. Chased by Wandy Pierre-Louis, and a flag is down. 
back at the 39 yard line. Boy, I hate to pick on one guy a lot, but Kyle Jackson of safety that time was right there to make the play, and uh, Sean Bailey runs right through him after catching the ball. Watch number three on this slant play right there in the middle of the field. He cheats over with the motion. It's a slant play. He's standing right there. Kind of runs right by him. He over-pursued it and right through his territory again. Uh, another slant good throw and a missed tackle in that Florida secondary. 46 yard gain but a procedure call. Ooh. Now how about this? I mean the first down the ball snapped at the 20 the flag dropped at the 39 yard line. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage against the offense. Penalty five yards down remain first. Wipes out a 46 yard game. What happened, I think, is the receiver and the motion guy moved at the same time. Now watch what happens right here. He's off the line of scrimmage. There's a shift. Everybody stop. I guess they're calling this guy off the line of scrimmage down here. Wow. Oh, that's really, really close. That wipes out a 46-yard gain. Here's the handoff to Marino, and he's stuffed for a loss. Mm, 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 mm. That was really a huge penalty, that motion penalty on first down. Off the back foot, right side. This is Jason Johnson, number 39. Jason Johnson from Chicago. Here's a footnote. He sang in the high school choir with Jennifer Holliday, the star of Dreamgirls, who won uh, American Idol. Yes, I don't know if she won it, but it doesn't matter. She did everything else after well, it. Well, she, yes, indeed. Won an Oscar. And we got to credit Dave McMahon, our longtime Georgia guru, for that little nugget. Third down, nine. Marino's in the backfield. Here's Trip Chandler, the tight end, tight to the right. Inside. Whoa, nothing doing. Sean Bailey. Well, how about the effect of the penalty? Absolutely. The ball would have been, what, 50, 45-yard line yes. down here? Now after a five, you know, hazy, kind of, you know, wasn't an obvious call on that, that illegal per se, a penalty. Florida that time did not look to be aligned right. People running all over, and that really made the stop easier for Florida because they were misaligned. How about this? First punt of the ball game for the Georgia Bulldogs. Looks Brian like Mims. Looks like they're coming for it. Excuse me, Vern. Yeah, here comes the punt safe formation for the Georgia Bulldogs. Nice, high, returnable. Brandon James. There's a block and there's a flag. Yes, yeah. indeed. Block in the back. No doubt about it. Marquis Anderson, number 14, looked like he might have uh, been guilty of the illegal block in the back. Well, how about this? It seemed like Georgia comes out, puts the points on the board. Florida comes right back and answers, and they get a stop thanks to that. That five-yard penalty was bigger than the 30-yard penalty earlier. Absolutely. During the return, illegal block in the back against the receiving team. Penalty 10 yards from the spot of the foul. First I can see somebody using the name Gary. I can't see it happening with Vern. First down, Florida. 28-24, Georgia. Tebow pumps once. He's been sacked five times in this game. That's the fifth sack, and that equals the number of times Tebow had been downed behind the line of scrimmage in the previous seven games. It's going to come from the left side, top of the screen here, left side of Tebow, but it's going to be a kind of a finesse pass to the outside, and Tebow doesn't see it. He tries to reload, and that time Jason Watkins could not handle big Marcus Howard. That's the second sack of the day for Marcus Howard. Second down and 18. Three men down for Georgia. They bring five. Tebow pumps once. 
Fires it incomplete. Cornelius Ingram right in his mitts. Well, sometimes, uh, you know, you don't use a guy all game, and uh, he just isn't in the flow of the game. And Ingram, he's not going to drop a pass like that all year. Hits him right in the helmet, and he drops it. Flag on the play. Here's the call. Illegal shift on the offense. Penalty is declined. Four. Third. Third. <laughs> Too many flags in front of too many people. That's right. Well, CI, yeah, that's money in the bank, and that would have got it to about third and five instead of third and 17 or 18 here. Officially, they'll call it 18. Murphy comes right. Harvin in the slot right. Keiston Moore is back on the field for the first time since the first quarter. That's Moore who goes in motion left. Tebow drilled as he lets it go. It's caught. How about that? Andre Caldwell breaks the tackle, first down, Florida. But Georgia decides to gamble. They bring five players, meaning it's one-on-one -on -one in the secondary. Caldwell, you see the inside technique right here. It's man-to-man. -man. Caldwell goes down, runs him off, catches it, and then runs through the tackle from Prince Miller. That's the key. How about that? They decide to bring five. One-on-one, -on -one and Tebow delivers it, and Caldwell finishes it. Needed 18 on third down. They got 19. First down at the 45. Tebow steps back. Six times he's been down. Jarius Wynn, number 99, first sack of the season. Because Tebow does not have the running a threat, Georgia is teeing off and sacking him similar to the way that Florida's defense went after Woodson. Without that running threat, Georgia's able to try to meet Tebow in the pocket, and now Tim is finding out what the rest of us feel like playing quarterback. Well, we were told that he was suffering from a severely bruised shoulder, a contusion of the shoulder. I would say it's obvious it is obvious. seriously bruised. Obvious. Second down and 18. Flags down. A timeout called as uh, just prior to the flag. Now the conversation between coach and quarterback. Time called. We'll be right back. Georgia with three down. They bring five again. Stunts inside. Passes. Incomplete. Incomplete. It'll be third down. You can just see that this Georgia team is sick of hearing about Florida. Ball is actually, I think, thrown to the wrong side of the formation. You have more of a chance. The numbers are better to the right side. It allows the safety to come on Caldwell, and obviously that ball came out, and uh, it was pretty close. Just a moment ago on third and 18, Tebow found Andre Caldwell for a 19-yard game. They're not going to blitz here. Might bring four, but they're not going to bring five. They bring three. Tebow. Straight down the middle. He overthrew wide open Cornelius Ingram. He had two of them. He had Caldwell also. Ball sailed on him just a bit. Ingram's here to the outside. Caldwell's going to be just outside of him. Watch this. Two guys open on the same play. <laughs> One miss. The other, Caldwell, says, I was open too. Ball just a hair long. Maybe about three yards too high and so on fourth and 18 214 to go in the third here is Chaz Henry Thomas Flowers is back grabs it on the run at the 30 nice open field tackle at the 33 yard line that's a 39 yard punt and eight on the return that is only the third punt return against Florida all year maybe there's a flag Now the option with the Georgia Bulldogs. 
They had not allowed a punt return against them, either a yard or a return itself, until Kentucky. A aggressive play here by Rick would send him back. Let's see if he continues to be aggressive. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage on the kicking team. The penalty will be added to the end of the run. First down. That's right. My mistake. That's the rule this year. You right. can't add it. Good field position. Good call by Mark Rick. So Mark Rick's squad gets it back with 2.03 to go. Matthew Stafford for the day. 7 of 12 for 131 yards. 84 of those yards on one strike to Muhammad Massaquan. And there's the guy, the story of the game so far right there, Marino, back in this football game. He'll ride him again. He does a nice spin move, breaks a tackle, and darts out to the 48-49 yard line. All right, thank you, Tim. Kyle Jackson is out. Dustin Monroe, Dorian Monroe, has moved to safety. And here's the reverse. They fake it, and Stafford is caught and dropped. Ryan Stamper, the backup outside linebacker. Well, right now, I think Georgia fans are saying, we saw this play against South Carolina. We don't like this play anymore. Third and one play against, or maybe it was fourth and one, where Stafford turns his back. And this time on a play on another sack where Stafford had no chance selling one of those fancy Boomer Esiason type fakes. <laughs> Remember that when Boomer used to do it? I do. David Green at Georgia was great at that in his four years as a starter. Second down and 20. Stafford back right side. Oh, what a gun. But he leads his receiver, Sean Bailey, by just a yard too much. Well, take a look at this. Kentucky lost at home to Mississippi State today. That leaves four with two defeats. Again, Florida, if they win out the next three weeks, they are in as the SEC East champion. South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee with two apiece. And how about the way Mississippi State is fighting? I think they're one game, one win away from a bowl possibility. Kyle Jackson back in the secondary defensively. Third down and 20. Florida with a three-man rush, a little lob out to the fullback, Sutherland, and Georgia will punt it away. Brandon Spikes, number 51, makes the tackle. As the pressure has ratcheted up here, you can see both teams are now starting to look at the scoreboard and not wanting to be the one to make the next big mistake. See if we get the punt underway on the final play of the third quarter. Brian Mims, who had not punted at all in the first half, on for his second in succession here in the third quarter. Well, he's going to wait until the fourth quarter. Seventy-fifth time these two have collided in Jacksonville. And at the end of three, it's 28-24. We will return the Jacksonville Municipal Stadium right after this word from your local station. And you my graveyard smash You'll catch on in a flash Then you can monster mash Certain songs don't you think that Ugga particularly appreciates <laughs> they resonate through the ages. We begin the fourth quarter in Jacksonville. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson. Georgia leads it 28-24. And on fourth down and 20, Brian Mims will punt. Brandon James awaits it at the 15-yard line. Short. Very, very short. It does take a Georgia roll, but it will come to an end at the 31-yard line. A 30-yard punt, and the Florida Gators 
with an obviously injured quarterback Tim Tebow who has been limited throughout the game. Yeah it, it's still going to be it's I mean they're going to have to go with him though. I, I think they're going to need him. I don't think Tebow or his offensive line are used to handling all the blitz packages without the play action passes along with it. So I think he's going to have to run just enough to be able to throw it if they're going to win this football game. And obviously they're going to have to at least get the 30 29 or 31 points to win it. First down and 10. Here's Tebow, hands it off. Harvin starts left and pulls back to the right. Well, you know that Tim Tebow has taken on an aura of Superman. How about this? This was in the fifth grade, a church play at First Baptist Church in downtown Jacksonville. How appropriate. <laughs> there's his mom. Pam. It's just exactly like him, doesn't it? Oh, my gracious. Second down and five. Percy Harvin again in the backfield. Option play, the pitch. Harvin gets a good block downfield at the 45 yard line. Well, he got a good block by a wide receiver then. Coming back, Sebo takes it as far as he can, pitches it out. I didn't not see who got the block downfield. Jared Faison. Faison, number 11, got the block. And Harvin, the option and the run game, still alive in this football game. And it's what they do. It's what they do. They have to do this to win. First down and 10. Hand up, left side, Brandon James. He fights. Calls for a first down at the 33-yard line. All right, Tim, that Pac-10 is uh, proving to be a quite interesting, Absolutely. really intriguing conference this year. First down and 10. Florida trailing by four. Tebow steps up, pulls back, goes right side, man coverage. A little jostling at the one between Harvin and Prince Miller and uh, no flag and an incomplete pass. That's that run formation with the quarterback play option play action pass. Georgia probably got sick of watching it for two weeks in their film study. They were ready for that one. Obviously we've uh, we've dwelt on the Tebow injury. How about the week off for Georgia to prepare for this? Well, usually it's been the other way around. Usually Florida's have the week off, but I think they gained a lot of energy watching the league come back to them. Second down and 10. Caldwell starts in motion, hands it off. He's caught behind the line and dragged down. It'll be third and 12. Well, the open week. This is the first time since 1991 that Georgia has had the open week prior to this game. Florida usually schedules it that way. They're 14 and four over the years with an open week. Georgia two and two. It's third and 12. Bulldogs lead the Gators by four. This has been the situation where the sacks have occurred. Six sacks already in this game. Georgia's coming. Here's Tebow, right side. Catch is made, but it'll be short of the first down. So at the 25, Caldwell makes the catch. It'll be fourth down and two. I tell you, you're going to have blitzes. You're going to have to pick it up coming from the back line. Picked up by little Brandon James. You don't have to be six foot tall to pick up a blitz. And now with fourth and short, I think they're, they're not going field goal, are they? No. Or, or at least they're going to try to fake it and try to draw them off sides. But this is Tebow time. Keaston Moore is back on the field, the fullback of the running back. Now, in a normal circumstance, this would be Tim Tebow all the way. Not much time. Two seconds. Hand it off. No, sir. No, sir. You can't tell me that Florida would not run Tebow if it wasn't for his shoulder. The ball goes over on downs. 
They hand it off on the attempted sweep. Renee Curran makes the tackle. Well, it was supposed to be a fake reverse to Harvin. Caldwell's here. Harvin is going to go back. Watch. Not enough time. Actually bumps in to Keiston Moore. Oh, bad game for Keiston Moore here. Watch him bump in to Harvin, and that's what really did not allow the pitch on the play. I think that was going to be a reverse. Time call. And now, it's time for our Geico scoring recap. Georgia Bulldogs open the scoring, a one-yard plunge by Noshan Marino. Now that brought the entire Georgia bench onto the field. A total of 30 yards and penalties marked off in the kickoff. Murphy tied it up with his 40-yard reception from Tim Tebow, 7-7. And then Massaqua, beautiful pass. Over the shoulder catch, 84 yards from Matthew Stafford, 14-7. Wandy Pierre-Louis, a 25-yard interception return for a touchdown, a subsequent penalty for unnecessary celebration on that one. 14-14, Joey Eos with a season-long and a career-long 43-yard field goal. Florida led 14-7. Then Marino gets his second touchdown, a beautifully executed effort out to the left. And Brandon Sutherland, a one-yard touchdown catch, 28-17. And then Team Tim Tebow, a two-yard run. And that is where we stand, 28-24. The Gators just went for it on fourth and two, unsuccessful. And Georgia has the ball. Marino, 146 yards. His career high, 157 two weeks ago. Bounces this one to the outside. And is tackled inbounds at the 31-yard line. Well, this neutral site game, and now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athletes. We've got two of them. Chris Gonder, a major in biology with a grade point average of 3.44. He's already been accepted for the Mercer University School of Medicine. And for the Florida Gators, Keiston Moore with a great point average of 3.22. Sports management, active in community service, the young man from Arlington, Texas. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future, shown today by donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. And as we were advising you of the uh, athletes, scholar athletes of the day, Florida, a personal foul. Yeah, it was Juan de Pierre-Louis, number four, who jammed his hand into the face mask of the receiver out there. I didn't see who it was. But uh, way away from the play, a silly penalty from Florida is going to make it a first down. Watch right there at the end. Two Not. shots. Would have got by with the first one, not the second one. On first down, Stafford pulls it back, wants to go deep. Deep left side, battle for it. Caught! Touchdown, Georgia! Mikey Henderson! 53 yards, Stafford to Henderson. The same combination that gave the Georgia Bulldogs an overtime win earlier this year. One of my favorite calls when I played was to go after a defensive back who just got a penalty. Mike Bobo goes right after Ron D. Lee Pierre Louis with a deep ball. Now it was pretty good coverage. I'm not saying that, but I love that strategy. A defensive back doesn't want to get two penalties. You should get an easy release. And the lead is back to 11. Mikey Henderson's second reception of the year for a touchdown. Again, you just had a penalty. You don't figure he's going to play physical. You put the ball to the outside, and Mikey Henderson takes it away from him for another play. Coming into this game, Georgia only had the longest play of the year was 50 yards. They've had big ones in this football game. And the young man from Dallas is celebrating. Huge play again, Matthew Stafford to Mikey Henderson. 35-24, the Georgia Bulldogs. Losers of 15 of the last 17 between these two. They set the tenor for the afternoon when they got the first touchdown of the game, and the entire Georgia squad came out to help celebrate in the end zone. Yep. Mark Rick told Tracy Wolfson at halftime, I told them I'd be angry <laughs> if they didn't get a penalty after the first touchdown of the game. 
And now the Florida Gators trail by 11. Georgia, in order to win the East and break this log jam with all these teams who have two defeats, must win its remaining games. And then they've got to have help. Here's Brandon James, number 25. Big return. He's still going. That's a 51-yard return for Brandon James, who last week in the win at Kentucky had one of 61. Well, before the game, you turned all Tim Russert on. Yeah, you. the formula, yeah. right? Oh, what do 37, you 31, knows where the wins. Right. And that's where they're at right now with 35 points. This has been a Georgia attack football game, but it's still a football game. And now it's going to be four down territory for Tebow the rest of this football game because they are now going to say Chris Leak last year against Tennessee and last year against South Carolina brought us back. Mr. Tebow, can you bring us back? If he does, he will do so with a very bruised right shoulder that has had an obvious impact in this game. He puts it on his hip, fakes it, has to settle for the alternate receiver who is Percy Harvin. That's a pretty good choice as an alternate Woo! receiver. And a 34-yard gain on top of the 51-yard kickoff return. It just doesn't get any better than this. No. Nope. It really doesn't. Both sides have called each other out. There is Harvin right there. Excuse me. I tried to circle him. There goes the second dime. He fakes, looks downfield. His drop-off is Harvin. How about that drop-off? Fake the Harvin. Nobody opened downfield. You know where your outlet is. Give it to your outlet. A perfect throw. For all the world, he looked like David Green, the former Georgia fullback or quarterback on that one. Here's a handoff to Harvin. Goes right. He's to the five. He is out of bounds. Near the two-yard line. See where they spot it. It might be closer to the one. This, this is just why, though, when you're playing Florida, you can't take one series off. It, 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 it really is like playing tennis. You've got to hold serve. George has been holding serve because you know when Florida gets a serve back, and they got the serve back right now, Rutledge is going to make a block, Harvin's going to catch a pass, and sometimes even run over the official at the end of a play. Boom! Goes the dynamite. Second down and two. Tebow, no. Third and two. Third and one of the two. Ten minutes to go, 35-24. Here comes Harvin. Here comes Lewis Murphy. How about that call again? I mean, I, I know I'm beating a dead horse, and, I, and whatever it is. The call was more finesse, and it was to the right side so he could protect the right shoulder when he ran to the right. Timeout, Georgia. They've used two. One remaining. What a battle. I don't know that the official would agree. Nine forty three to go in this one. Thirty five twenty four Georgia third and two at the three. Interesting decisions here for Urban Meyer. If they don't gain a lot of yards a field goal makes today one possession game eight points. If they score I suspect he'll go for two. Tebow, he'll keep it. Touchdown, Florida! Field goal team is running out, but the Florida coaches are bringing them back. They will go for two, yeah, and if the try is successful, they can tie it with a field goal. It demands a two-point play. Ten minutes here. If you don't make it, you're still only behind five. Tim Tebow's second rushing touchdown of this afternoon, his 12th of the year. You also got to look on the backside. If Georgia even kicks a field goal, say you don't make it, Georgia kicks a field goal, it's still back to an eight-point game, so just one possession. It's a no-brainer. You go for two. Easton Moore back on the field. He's alongside Tebow. Caldwell is in motion. 
Here's the roll. T-ball pulls up, drills it. Incomplete. Well, it looked like Bubba Caldwell didn't know that ball was to him. First, the touchdown. Fake the play to Harvin, follow up. No choice now, bruise or not, you're going for it. And the try for two. Roll out, Ingram's in the back of the end zone. He's trying to go either to Ingram or Caldwell. It was tipped. Somebody got their finger on that. That was C.J. Bird that got his finger on that ball. Five-point game here in Jacksonville. Eos will kick off. Asher Allen is the deep man. From the goal line. There's one man who misses. They caught him from behind. Asher Allen is down at the 31-yard line. Joey Sorrentino made the tackle. Well, Tebow carried the ball six times on that drive, Vern. Kind of reminds me of that old story about the scorpion who's trying to cross the river. Yes. Can't get a lift. The turtle finally says, I'll take you if you don't sting me. And the scorpion says, I promise I won't. If I sting you, I'll draw him too. Halfway across, scorpion stings him. He looks at me. He goes, why? He said, that's what I do. This is what Florida does. They run Tebow. They don't have anything else. I'm just here to set you up. <laughs> First down is him. Well told, by the way. <laughs> Matthew Stafford. Marino. Marino with 150 yards before that carry, but he lost a couple. Well, the first time in the series history, and there have been 85 previous meetings or including today. Both teams have scored north of 30 in the same game. Larry Munson says, first time I don't show up, and they both go into 30. Right. <laughs> I bet he's not fishing right no, now. No, I don't think so. I bet Larry Munson is watching this and listening to his partners on the radio. Larry, who still does all the Georgia home games. Second down and 12. Stafford. He's got two big touchdowns today. Massaqua has one of them. And double coverage as Tony Joyner comes over. How about no Sean Marino? His second start of his career. He redshirted a year ago. 157 against Vandy two weeks ago. And boom. Yeah, I, I think that running backs like to be the guy that's featured. They lather up and play better the more they carry the ball. It might not be good for them over a 10 games, but in one game, I think they love it. Right now, third and long, five-point game, under nine minutes. Georgia needs to not take their foot off the gas pedal. Big cushion out here, big cushion. Stafford looks that way. Inside run, Bailey, huge conversion. Matthew Stafford to Sean Bailey. Too big of a cushion. Somebody busted on this play for Florida. I think the corner, whoever it was that time, expected help. You cannot let an SEC receiver have a 14-yard cushion. You could see it, Marque Anderson right there. Now watch this. He's going to give him. Watch him back up. He's expecting help inside. He gets no help. And an easy completion. The Florida corners, again, have been problems for Florida. Here's the toss to Marino. He breaks into the open, and he's got another first down. Georgia at the 37-yard line. That's a 12-yard gain. There's no way. i got to go back to that third down and long. There is no way that Florida is going to play one-on-one -on -one coverage with that type of a cushion. Somebody inside busted on that coverage, allowing the first down. And now, Georgia's saying, all right, we can control the clock. We've got a great kicker. The worst we're going to come away from here, they feel their goal is an eight-point lead. No Sean Marino with a career high of 160 yards on the ground. He'll get it again. This time, a yard now. Georgia is not close enough. They cannot let their foot off the gas. They must again throw or have something to move the ball. 
On second down and nine, Matthew Stafford back. Flips it out left side. That's caught by Bruce Figgins, the tight end. The backup tight end. His second catch of the entire season. Now let's give this one in some uh, kudos here to the offensive line. Now this is a Florida defensive line that has gotten sacked throughout the year, but it's not vintage Florida now. There's injuries, they're a little bit tired, and Derek Harvey wasn't even on the field for that snap. First down at the 24, 35-30, the clock still running. Georgia has one timeout remaining. Florida has a couple. Jason Johnson and Brandon Sutherland in the backfield. Blitz. They hand it. Johnson goes left, breaks a tackle, and he's down to the 16-yard line. And uh, Derek Harvey not on the field. Let's get more from Tracy. That's right. More injuries for this Florida defense. He is on the sideline with a right hip injury. He's been sitting there with ice on it. No word whether he'll return. All right, Tracy. Thank you. That's four defensive linemen for Florida that have been contributors out of this football game. Second down and three. And Georgia continues to run left. No Sean Marino back on the field, 161 yards. And he bets that he might get the ball here. Toss Marino. Velasco leads the way. This will be close at the 15 yard line. <laughs> Well, if you're going to run the ball as a tailback, you got to want to run the ball as a tailback. And this guy, he says his hero is Walter Payton. He loves the way he got up after every run and ran back to the huddle. I told him I can't give him that mantle yet. He's got to earn that one. Third and one. Marino with 27 carries in the ball game. He'll get it again. He goes left again. He's to the five. First and goal, Georgia. Run left. Run left. Run left. That has been the game plan. Run Marino left, I should add. That offensive line. Now, remember, there's a true freshman over there, Sturdivant is taking on, they've got two true freshmen on the offensive line, and Marino on that list, that all-time freshman list, got his name up there with some big names. The biggest of whom is at the top. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to get that mantle yet either. No, no, no. <laughs> First and goal. 440 to go. Stafford hands it off to Marino. And he's down at the three-yard line. It well, is imperative that Florida holds Georgia to a field goal here. Defending national champions. Back-to-back -back losers earlier in the season. They came back and won at Kentucky last year. But uh, dire circumstances right now. Second and goal from the three. Mark Rick, one and five. against this Florida team. Here's Stafford. Marino. Got it. Touchdown, Georgia. Since 1990, the Georgia Bulldogs have defeated Florida twice. 1997, when they were 20-point underdogs, 2004, and they lead by 11. They are reviewing the play upstairs. Second effort. This has been the story of the game for this guy. Did he get his the football across the line before his knees touched or his elbows touched? First look, we said yes. There's the football. Couldn't see the knees on that one. The ball is clearly across the line. Where was the knee? I think he stretched it out. I think this is going to stand. What a drive. And I think the key play of the drive, I believe a missed assignment by someone on the Florida defense. There's no way on that third and long 
you play 15 yard cushion with no help. That was the third and 12. Here's Marino with his 30th carry of the ball game. And if the play stands, he'll have 178 yards, three touchdowns. What an effort by Noshawn Marino. The first drive of the game, Georgia went left nine times. This drive, they went left to seal the football game. They started it and finished the same way and had some big passes in between. And that's where those two freshmen reside. Yes. The left tackle, Trenton Sturdivant, true freshman out of Wadesboro, North Carolina, and Chris Davis, a redshirt freshman at left guard. And that was an over, they, they over shifted their line to the right. They lined up the wing back to and the right. They ran to the left. on the field stand. Now, I don't really think that Urban Meyer had any choice but to go for two, considering this type of football game. But when you don't make it, this is how it comes back to haunt you because now it could be a 12 point game and you're going to need more than a touchdown, a two point play, and a field goal to tie it. Got a pre snap penalty here. Substitution violation by the Florida Gators. No Sean Marino. Was way down the depth chart, agreed to red shirt last year. Danny Ware was still with the team. Illegal it's substitution. 12 men on the defense. The penalty declined. Try down. Now, well, last week was such a beneficial week for both of these teams and for Urban Myers for the match. They had to regain control of their destiny in this one. Now here's Matthew Stafford and Noshawn Marino. Let's go back and look at that big pass completion on third down. Third and 11 or 12 yards. Watch the cushion. Anderson backs out. No help inside. Easy pitch and catch. That led to the touchdown. It's an overload right. Five guys to the right. They run back to the left. And Marino runs right through a Florida Gator. He's the one that wanted it more. Georgia wanted it more. They executed better. No Sean Marino, 178 yards, three touchdowns. So he's had back-to-back -back games now that uh, operate on either side of the open week, 157 and 178. Yeah, no mystery here either of what Georgia's done. They've been balanced. They've run for 190 yards and passed for over 200 yards. They've done both finesse and power. There's a very short kick taken at the 31-yard line by Eric Rutledge. His second kickoff return of the ball game. Well, 42-30 here. Florida, South Carolina, Georgia, Tennessee, each with two defeats. Now, if this should stand, if Georgia should win this, then the winner of tonight's South Carolina-Tennessee game would have uh, a lead in the SEC. They game. would, and it would for Georgia to get to the SEC championship, they'd still have to win some remaining games that are going to be tough. They got some tough ones coming up. I think Auburn and Kentucky comes to Athens, True. and then they would need the winner of that game to lose another game. First down, here's Tebow back. Right side, caught by Harvin, as Cornelius Ingram. And he gets to the 37-yard line. Gain of 26. How about this? Only two teams have ever appeared in the SEC championship game with three conference losses, LSU in 2001, Arkansas in 2002. Well, Tim Tebow still has an opportunity. They've got two timeouts left in the game. We saw Matt Ryan do it Thursday Thursday night. It's still a football game. I kind of remember that, yes. Here's Tebow, right side. Caldwell looks for a block, gets it. Caught from behind and dropped at the 24-yard line by Marcus Howard. That's a gain of 13. That's why you can never stop attacking in modern-day college football. These offenses are so good now, you've got to continue, as I like to say, hold serve, or you give your defense too many problems. Matt Ryan in Boston College with 14 points in the final 2-11 to come from behind 
and defeat Virginia Tech on Thursday night. 42-30 here with 3.16 to go. Quarterback draw, Tebow. At the 18-yard line, the tackle made by Rashad Jones, number nine. And as this clock goes down, even should Florida score, you're now looking at the point where an onside kick is almost mandatory. Second and five. Tebow back. Fires it, right side, facing. He keeps it inbounds. The clock will stop as they move the chain in college football for the first down. 2.44 to go. Harvin Moore is uh, way at the top of the screen. Split wide, wide right. Clock at 2.39. They come from the corner. Tebow lets it go. It's incomplete. He just did avoid his seventh sack of the ball game. Danelle Ellerby, number 33, coming on the blitz. Well, when you only have five blockers, if you bring six, one of the two outside guys is going to come free. Now, you better come fast. Remember that LSU-Kentucky game? One of the outside guys delayed, and he was at, it allowed Andre Woodson to pump once and throw a touchdown. When you overload blitz, you must come 100 miles an hour. Tebow appears back, comes out to chat with Urban Meyer. Got to watch the play clock. Yep, it's at 10. 10 seconds. Yep. Hurry up. <laughs> play clock at 5. Moore late getting out. Now he gets set. They do get it snapped. There's a bobble and the turnover recovered by Danelle Ellerby. Well, you can put that on the Florida coaching staff. You can put that on the Florida coaching staff. And I think Tebow might have hurt the shoulder trying to get that ball. They tried to get fancy and call it tricky play, and they ran the clock down, and it cost them. In play, bad snap. Tipo reaches out. It's his right shoulder again, Burn. Yes. That's the senior Drew Miller with a bad snap. And he took a shot from Ellerby yep. right on the right shoulder. Watch him throw. Watch this. He's going to do a partial Steve Spurrier. Doesn't have a visor. Nope. A little hitch of the pants. And the headset goes. Right side. No Sean Marino with his 31st carry today. Now, Tim, you faded on me, but I knew you were there. Yep. Somehow I always know Tim <laughs> is there. Second down, handoff, right side. 135 to go. Timeout called by Florida. Danelle Ellerby, number 33, and the bad snap from Drew Miller. Well, everyone was hurried here. Everyone knew the clock was, oh, you know what? I think Drew Miller, I think he might have thought that Tebow was under center. Now, how would you possibly think that? He hasn't been under center twice in his career. I think they know the cameras there? I think so. Yep. Third down, high formation. 90 seconds to go. It's pretty close to making it, isn't it? I'll tell you, a key fourth down play. Florida got that play on late, and it was never right. Remember when they didn't make it? They got stopped in the backfield. Now on a key third down play, the Florida coaching staff brings Tebow over. They shift, and they motion with the clock going down. Neither play was run very well by Florida. They shot themselves in the foot twice by trying to get a little too fancy on fourth down and on third down calls. Here comes the chain. First down, Georgia. Well, the Bulldogs go back home against Troy next week out of conference. Then they welcome Auburn and Kentucky. They finish the regular season at Georgia Tech. No head coach in the country has ever defeated Georgia in three straight years. Urban Meyer had a chance. 
Well, there's no need for Georgia to run another play. They can take a knee and win this football game. And they will. They've got to count the clock. They've already thought this out. They know with one timeout and under two minutes, they control the football game. Matthew Stafford. Well, the only, uh, watch this. Oh, we got the green con. This is going to be so cold. I don't think he minds. Well, he took a high dive off the 10-meter board earlier this summer. Now he gets a hug from Keelan Johnson, who grew up in Daytona Beach, and said he never got so much as a questionnaire from the Florida Gators here back in August. Here's the head coach of the Georgia Bulldogs. Those are bad shorts. But that's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice high dive. He led his team, let's be honest. He challenged them, he told them how to do it, and he said, you better be aggressive because if you back down, they'll roll over you. He had a great coaching game. Mark Richt. Tim Tebow. Matthew Stafford, first meeting between these two outstanding quarterbacks, ranked in the top three among high school recruits, the one from Highland Park in Dallas. That would be Matthew Stafford. The other from Nice High in St. Augustine. This was a homecoming game for Tim. He's seen so many of his games with his family, but as a starting quarterback, he fails to lead his team to victory because in part of the bruised shoulder. Now time for the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. They'll stay in the eye. Chappas and Sutherland in the ball game. Chappas goes in motion, handed to no shot. He dives, stretches out, touchdown. And look at the entire Holy Georgia smokes. offense coming up. That's the, the whole team. The whole team is on the field right now. Yes, they were. That was Scott Howard, who is doing the radio games now for Larry Munson, longtime collaborator with him. And the Georgia Bulldogs knock off the Florida Gators. That's his wife, Catherine. <laughs> Cancer survivor, terrific family. And They've the got four kids, John, David, Zach, and Anya. And works as the water girl all game, doesn't yes, she? Yes, she does. She may have been behind the Gatorade back. <laughs> now it's time for the Ruby Tuesday player of the game. No question about this one. No Sean Marino. 33 carries, 188 yards. Mark Richt, that's as happy as we've seen him in a couple of years. Here's the lineup tonight, NCIS, followed by CSI New York, and 48 Hours Mystery. They will be celebrating from Jacksonville to Athens tonight for Tracy Wolfson, Gary Danielson. I'm Vern Lundquist. Good night from Jacksonville.